Disasters. disasters welcome to another episode of a really bitch i'm wombat and i'm nomi and we're going to be talking about adulting being a functioning adult burly <laughs> <laughs> burly i mean it doesn't feel like it considering i mean obviously we work we are adults in mm. all sense of the word but it just doesn't feel like that No, no. Like, I always look to older people. Like, even if they're, like, two years older than me, I'm like, oh, you're you're an adult. I mean, (laughs) we're literally sat on the floor drinking wine at 5pm on a Tuesday. Well, part of adulting is having freedom. (laughs) Is making your own choices. And my choice is to drink wine at 5pm on a Tuesday. (laughs) Um, so you know how I just said, oh, I think people older than me, like I look up to them and I'm like, oh man, they have it all together. They're, they're real adults. They know what they're doing with their life. Yeah, and obviously yeah. they could just be thinking that, she, they could be thinking the same thing, but with like people older than them. Mm. What, at what age do you think you'll be a real, uh, adult. a real adult minus the imposter syndrome? Oh man. I don't know, bro. Like, what, 50? Oh, Jesus. 50, really? Like, oh, damn, I don't know. I Okay, so, like, my parents, they just seem like they know everything. I mean, like, I remember the other day, oh, God, what was I saying? And they, like, literally looked at me like I was the thickest piece of shit. <laughs> um, I was like to my dad, oh, how's this thing going to work? Because there's no current. And he's like, well, what do you mean there's no current? It's got battery. It doesn't. It doesn't need current. And I just didn't get it. And my dad was like, how the fuck are you supposed to be going into the, like, working world? (laughs) And you don't even fucking know that. (laughs) Like, oh, bro. It's like the basic of the basic. The basics of the basics. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even know what a credit card really was up until quite recently. Mm, That's only because I told you to get one. (laughs) Yeah. But also, like, I remember telling my mum, I was like, okay, so where does the money go? And my mom's like, what do you mean money? I was like, you know, the money on the credit card. And she's like, uh, it's it's credit. It's That's why it's a credit card. And I was like, but, but the money. But what does it mean? Yeah, I was like, well, wait. Yeah, yeah, so they give you money and you pay it back. <laughs> and I was just like, wait. This concept is so foreign to me. Yeah, I was like, it's, it's not on the card. My issue with credit cards, don't get me wrong. I love my credit card. I can use it whenever, wherever. I just don't like the fact that they exist and why. What, so, credit cards? Yeah, because, why? so you need them to say you got a good credit score uh, Yeah. to allow you to get housing. Yeah, yeah. Why can't you just look at my bank statements? <laughs> you know, like, if I have the savings, if I have, you know, more than enough for a deposit or whatever, or my, you know, income is enough, Mm. Why the hell do you also need my credit? And people are going to be like, oh, it's so that, you know, you can prove you're like good at managing money and stuff. I'm like, okay, great. They can see I can manage money by all of the fat savings I have. Yeah, legit. Because that's the only thing I've been grinding in is is my savings. That's the only like thing that I think I've been succeeding at recently. Savings. Savings. It's just scrimping. Well, to be fair, I'm also a cheapskate. And, you know, this has always been part of my personality. I'm bare minimum. And I live at home with my parents and have done for three years, so... Yeah, that definitely does help. (laughs) I think also that that contributes to not feeling like an adult, though, living at home. 100%. You're basically living at home in the same house you grew up in. You're going to feel like you're 15 again. Like, legit, I mean, like, my room is literally as I left it before I went to uni. Like, even, okay, so, slight, slight detour. I brought a dude over, right, for a shag. Oof. Your parents' bedroom is literally next door. I know. 
<laughs> this is the thing. I I feel like that's something like sixteen year old me would have done. As if we were not those kinds of teens. No, we weren't. We weren't. So me at the at the what? ripe age of twenty four mm. decided to bring this dude that I've barely known um, <laughs> home with me for a shag, which didn't even happen. Disappointment. And um, I just remember him looking around my room and just like pointing out all these posters I have. I literally have uh, an entire shelf, an homage to the Vampire Diaries. Like he looked at it and he's just like, oh, so you you, like live here? And I'm like, yeah. You live, this is your decor? And I was like, yes. Problem? (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a fucking problem? Is there something you want to say, Dave? (laughs) um but yeah like i think that living at home defo makes me feel like less of a functioning adult because i get babied a lot i was gonna say my parents bring me coffee yeah that's that's like your one thing that you definitely play into is that you'll be in your room obviously like working or something like you don't leave your room a lot i know and um they will you will shout to get their attention and ask for a coffee and they will bring it up to you. <laughs> but the thing is, right, I feel like they're going to miss doing that, you know? Sometimes I don't even ask them and I just wake up and the coffee's there. <laughs> that is love. That's pure love. <laughs> I'll be out, right? Mm. Having, you know, a couple of drinks with people, with mates and stuff. Then I get a text. So like, when are you coming home? <laughs> Then I ignore the text because, you know, I'm drinking, I'm having fun. Yeah, of course. Then I, I, you know, look at my phone for whatever reason, three missed calls. Oh, God. They're they're probably halfway through calling the police now. Yep, yep. You know, reported missing, all that kinds of shit. (laughs) And then, like, when I call them, my mom's like, it's very late. And I'm like, I am 24 years old, bro. Because, I mean, like, even to this day, like, for today, for instance... My dad was like, oh, we got some wine, you know, for you, Naomi. Oh, this is this is one for me as well. Yeah. And then my mom just literally like whiplash and she's like, don't drink anymore. You can't drink anymore. And I'm just there like, bro, I am I am 24 years <laughs> I old. can drink wine if I want to. I can do it, mom. <laughs> like, you know, it's just yeah. insane to me though. It's so funny because it's like... It is really funny. I get I get the same thing from my mom every time. Like, I remember at uni. Obviously, I went to uni in Cornwall. Yeah. Cornwall. That And my parents live in, like, the outskirts of London. Yeah. And... <laughs> If if I was to say, I call my mum and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out tonight so I can't stay on the phone for too long, I need to get ready, she'll be like, don't drink too much. Oh my god, don't, I don't always drink. used to get that, yeah. And it's like, it's funny as well because obviously my sister is 10 years older than me. It, no, this is funny because I, I told my dad in the car on the way here, uh, yes, I got a lift because, as I said, I'm a child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um it was so funny. I was like, oh, Wombat and her sister were born on the same day, but 10 years apart. The planning that went into that. No, oh, no, don't. <laughs> like, no, no, no. How, what are the chances? What oh, can I say? My parents are punctual. Okay, I'm just going to go throw myself in the bin now. Um, <laughs> it's where we belong. But yeah, so my sister, who is 10 years older than me, if my, if my, if like, she lives in Leeds, by the way, and like, if she doesn't call my parents, my mum starts to prang out. And my mum will be like, she didn't call. That's very unlike her. She didn't call. And I'm like, dude, she's 34. She's doing 30-year-old things. She's doing 30-year-old things. It's fucking insane, though. Because my mum will literally be like, I don't know what's wrong. Do you think something's wrong? And I was like, I, I don't Probably busy. <laughs> busy working? Yeah, it's just... <laughs> what's... Okay, for people listening, you came from uni and then you moved home and then you what within like a year was it then you moved out and then yep now you're back home right yeah so i yeah i i went back home for a year ish yeah i'd say about a year probably less yeah less than a year um Mm. but me and my boyfriend he was like oh yeah I'll, i'll come live in london you know he was living in like a warehouse conversion, so his bedroom had no windows. Jesus. And he was just like, no, I need to get out of here. And so I was looking, I was like, no, it's time for me to move out. It's time for me to move out. 
Yeah. So I was looking for places and he was, I remember he was on holiday in Spain at the time and I was doing, I was still in England. So I was going to house viewings and like taking videos and stuff and laying and like showing him. And there was this one place that came up and we were really lucky and it was a really nice place, really good, like transport links, you know, all the things you want. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't even here. And I was like, babe, I think we should do, I think we should go for it. <laughs> mm, yeah. Cause I remember you guys like, it was pretty quick, right? Yeah. It, it was, it, well, it was in a really good neighborhood. Yeah. It, it was a nice place and it was going to get snapped up quick. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. You know, we made that, we made that jump. And then and then we just moved in together and we moved in for a year and then he realized along the way London really wasn't for him like yeah. he's not he's not a city person at all he's and not a city girl <laughs> he's definitely not a city girl and he was like no i i want to go back to cornwall where we went to uni and yeah. so he went back to it and that's why now we're doing long distance but obviously it was a great year yeah yeah and like my oh so <laughs> a part of adulting is always getting asked about your relationships oh bro okay look when you're younger, well, with our parents anyway, with my parents, I know it was very much, we're going to put you in an all-girl school because we don't want you distracted by boys. Yeah, can concur. And it was very much like, your studies come first, no boyfriends, no... Th my parents never really explicitly said no boyfriends. But it was it was implied. Oh, heavily implied. Yeah, I mean, considering yeah. I went to an all-girls Catholic school... Mm. <laughs> oh yeah you know it was heavily implied the fear of god was instilled in you oh um, they tried <laughs> that's what we got when we were younger when we were teenagers and we were told no you need to focus on your studies you need to do your best so you stay can have a good future the mandem. stay away from the mandem education first everyone i don't care if you if you are a mandem education first mm. so when you go to uni and you're trying to navigate relationships. Fuck me. Or just meeting people, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was the same for you, but at that point, my parents were kind of just expecting me to kind of find someone around that. When, yeah. this is my question, when did it become a complete u-turn oh what when they were like from no boys to yes please <laughs> where is your husband i don't like again i don't know about you but for me it's always it it was literally boys were just a no-go that was not gonna happen mm. even me mentioning meeting up with a guy my mom would be like what do you mean what who an no. absolute scandal legit my mom would be like no way and then when i went to uni and my mom will be like, don't you want a boyfriend? And I'm just there like, oh, <laughs> please no. Please. As well, I think there was a point where you were struggling. Like, I think you wanted a relationship, but the people that you were meeting or like beginning to date, they just weren't suited. Yeah, they were not compatible. Mm, and I it's think like, like, yeah, it's because it, it was that pressure. I, I, I know I felt it when I went to uni and like all my younger cousins were kind of like, this is it. If you don't get a boyfriend now, you're going to be old and lonely. Like, that's Jesus what they genuinely Christ. thought. Yeah. And like, also they, like us, went to an all girls school. And I yeah. think there is that pressure then to like be, well, at least for me, like, be in relationships, be sexually active, like, orally, because everyone else is sort of doing it. It's really weird because it's like, oh, we're going to keep you very sheltered for this amount of time and then you're going to be let out into the wild. I, I think it was for me, I wanted a, a partner rather than me being interested in the actual people I was seeing. Yeah, it was the idea of being in a relationship was much more interesting to you than the actual person you were with. Yeah, which is just no go. I would not recommend that route. Oh no, you were you got bored of them very, very quickly. Very, very far. Oh my god, do you remember that one time? I think it was like my birthday party and there was that one guy that came to the party and it was the day after the party. Uh, we were walking to McDonald's, which is like a 15 minute walk. I remember this. To the walk to McDonald's, I was like, I think I really like that guy. I think I really like him. And then the walk back, I was like, I don't like him anymore. <laughs> it was literally the walk to and from McDonald's and I was over this dude. Wow. It was literally, I'm telling you, I was like just thirsting for a relationship because I wanted to have a boyfriend. Did you, did you want to have a boyfriend or was it like, 
oh, at least people will get off my back kind of thing. Yeah, I think I just ex- I just knew it was an expectation of me mm. and people were just kept on going on about it and like aunties were getting involved and just being like, it's always the aunties. you have a boyfriend? And I'm just there like, bruh. The, oh my God, the number one thing you get asked as a a woman and we knew go visit family do you have a boyfriend do you have a boyfriend do you want to get married and i'm like here like i literally just finished uni exactly. i'm trying to start a career and you're asking me about something i i don't even have time to think about yeah this is insane like the whole marriage question i mean my parents are like still hot on it my mom described it as tinder but among asian moms <laughs> so it's like rather than you having the control they pick out someone suitable for you yeah and then you go on dates it's literally it's, it's like oh it's like a blind date then yeah but like the aunties are the algorithm you know <laughs> <laughs> it's just a network of asian mums like setting everyone you know, up but yeah so like my mum has been really hot on it and she like signed me up to this like Thing. She find didn't a give husband. my name or my my face. She just put it out into the ether that her daughter is of this age and, and single, single, ready to mingle. My mum was like, she keeps on talking about. It. She's like, oh, you know, I'm getting loads of offers, and I'm just there, like, okay, great, sweet, good for you, good for you. Why don't you go fucking marry them? Like, I'm so <laughs> I don't care. I think my parents still live under that 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 point of view where they're like you're in my house you're under our roof and therefore you play by our rules and to an extent they got they have a point right oh for sure it is their house yeah you got me there bitch you got got me me there there. (laughs) you know i'm like ah fuck um i mean speaking of that so we are thinking of renting as well together yeah so this is funny Mm. because when me and my partner were living together it was all great And obviously, he realised he didn't want to be in the city, and I completely, like, agreed with him that he wasn't happy here, so he should go somewhere he is happy. That doesn't mean our relationship ended. We're still together. We're just doing long distance. what some people may think. (laughs) So, our parents, well, my parents, uh, have very, like, traditionalist views. My mum has been very vocal of the fact that she thinks it's strange that after living with a partner we have decided to not continue living together. Yeah, I mean, like, even the whole concept of renting with a friend is foreign to my parents. Like, they find it weird. They find it weird that you and me are planning to live together despite the fact of you having a partner. Yeah, like I said, my mum just thinks, oh, now that you have a partner, you should, like, plan to move in with them and stay with them forever. Yeah, yeah. And it's like... Okay, well, you do realise that even if I did get a mortgage with a partner, we could break up. It's... I'm not going to put my career on hold, and he's not going to put his career on hold, just because w- we're, like, in a situation that means we're not living together. Yeah. It's like you're doing unnecessary mental gymnastics <sighs> to make it make sense. I mean, we've talked about it. We've been deliberating over this for a while. My parents are always like, it's going to be the death of your friendship. Oh yeah, mm. it, your your friendship is going to end. Something terrible is going to happen, and you guys are going to fall out. Yeah, money changes people. And I'm just yeah, there yeah. like okay. Obviously, this is this is why we're renting though, so we can yeah. so we can figure that out, and we can see what kind of people we are. Y- you know, like obviously, it could go horribly wrong. It could yeah. watch this space. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. It could. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, that can never be me because yeah, it could yeah. be. Because it does happen. It does it happen. Happens. But I've also known you for what, nearly a decade? Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> and it's just unlikely. And also, we're even if we did fall out terribly, mm. I'm pretty sure we know how to be civil. Yeah. We always say, look, don't go out of your way to be a dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's something we like to say to each other and just sort of, you know, obviously you do what's best for you as well, but don't go out of your way to be mean or horrible to someone. Yeah, I'd like to totally screw someone over. Like It's just unnecessary. It's it's weird because in my in 
my parents' generation, that's sort of unheard of, right? That you just casually rent with a friend. Like, oh yeah, same here. You just get married and then you move in. The number one worry is, yes, they might... I don't know, get married because they're living together or, you know, that's, or, you how, know. that's how, uh, that's how marriage works. Yeah. You, know, you live together and you're just like, meh, might as you, well. <laughs> no, you, you either live together and end up married or you live together and never speak to each other again because you fell out. It's so funny. How did they get from there to that? From A to Z. A to Z. What happened? What, what happened, happened in the in between? Yeah. <laughs> Come I on, know. I want to hear the backstory. Tell me my story. Tell me tell me the story. Tell me how we get there. <laughs> tell me how we get there. Please. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think, obviously, when we talk amongst ourselves, it's just a laugh. And I mean, it's still very up in the air at the moment. I mean, we'll, we'll see. That's why we're renting. It's like a trial period. Exactly. Like... Yeah, you've got to be smart about it as well. Yeah, like, just... It don't work out that way. But... It's it's funny though because we're adults, you know. You're twenty five and twenty four, and yet, and yet, why are we still being treated like little kids, man? Yeah, you're never gonna stop being their kid. My mom always tells me, even to this day, she always looks at me and she's like, "You will never stop being my baby." No, my mom says the exact same thing. <laughs> and I just says, she's like, "You are always my baba." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and you know, I look at her and I'm like, "Okay." There's a part of me that's like, "Oh, that's sweet." But most of the time, I'm like, oh my god, I'm not a child. I'm not a child anymore. It god, just, mom. Yeah, it like I don't know what it is, but it like really brings up this like I'm really I'm trying really hard to like be an adult and try to like make my way. And yeah, you say this one thing, and it's like, oh my god, my heart, all of this time I've put into trying to make it work, it just doesn't matter because I'm still a kid in their eyes. Yeah, it's weird though because it's like. I look at me and my sister, and obviously the 10 years between us is obviously, yeah, you know, is probably a factor. But I look at me and my sister, and I'm just like, whoa, she's so grown up, bro. Like, she just seems... Oh, God, yeah. Right? Like, when you compare me and her... Do you, what, do you just think she's, like, got it all together, or...? Yeah, I mean, she's not falling... You know, she's not falling apart at the seams, right? She's not like... Fucking... Whereas we call each other up every week, like, I'm uh, another breakdown. Every week, bruh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... we, we take turns, so like every other day. Then it'll, it'll be me, and then you, and then me. <laughs> we alternate, we alternate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, gotta keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. Yeah. <laughs> keep it funky. Um, But yeah, like I look at my, my sister, and it's so weird to think that she was like a teenager, you know? It, it just... it. I always imagine like my sister was just like birthed. <laughs> what as a fully functioning fully adult? Fully functioning adult. And yet here we are still in our phase from day one. Still in our messy ass phase. Messy ass phase. <laughs> okay, so you think you're only become you <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna fully become an adult when you're like fifty, right? I mean that's that here's to hoping. <laughs> here's to hoping. <laughs> here's to hoping. My friend. But what do you think will happen between now and then that will make you more of an adult? oh man yeah i don't know i i honestly i can't tell you i i have no idea what the next 10 15 years of my life is gonna look like i can't i can't even deal with the question what's your five-year plan i don't have one yeah um, um i don't know i just feel like right now where i'm at like i don't feel like when i look at my colleagues for instance they feel so adult but like yeah like i look at them and they just seem like fucking functioning adults mm -mm. In uh, they've got their head screwed on straight. <laughs> but then again, it's, is that just what you want to see? I don't know. They could be like fucking going to sleep crying every night. Who knows? Yeah, like, exactly. Don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what I gather is that they're able to hold their shit together. Mm -mm. You know, whereas I feel like I, I still feel like a kid. I Even feel like work, a kid. Like I feel like a child. I feel like a child too. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I, and sometimes I get scared. I was like, does it come across as really obvious that I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I read getting like a pay slip. I'm kind of like, I don't. What's the normal response? Like, I see people filing it away, and I'm just really <laughs> tucking it into my notebook. Oh like, my god! Right. This is my number one thing. I'm so I'm quite an organized person. I would say everything has its place. Whereas you're not like that. No. And one time, so Wombat recently uh, gave in a notice and she'd never done that before. So she called me up asking me, 
what do I need to do? Anyway, so we did that, we had a chat and it was fine. And with the new job, you obviously need to give information on like your student finance, if you're paying it back, um, you need pay slips and things like that for. And I asked her, hey, where do you keep all your pay slip? And she goes, I don't know. I I have never felt so much anxiety in my life. <laughs> the worst part is when I, I found some stray pay slips like tucked away like in the the living room it table. wasn't even in your room it was <laughs> and the only reason it was there is because my mum tucked it away that's scary to me <laughs> i keep i literally have a folder of like my contract my well my first employer's contract oh, my pay my slip. contract bro i like i just i every time i need to look at my contract which is rarely ever but say i do I just have to locate it in my email inbox. Oh my god. And then I open it up and I'm like, ah, yes. No, I have a paper trail of everything. Oh my god. See, this is the thing. This is that's good. See, you're on your way. Look no. At you. No. Look at you. <laughs> Definitely not. You're you're you know, you've got your you know, you're a bit more put together than I am. No, well, that, at least in that respect. Well, for me, I do it just for peace of mind because then it's easy to locate. But oh, okay, so there was one point where I started like my second job and at the time I was hired, I didn't sign a contract or anything. I was technically a freelancer. So I had to sort out my own taxes and I had never done that before. I cannot stress enough how irritating the government website is. (laughs) They make it incredibly difficult for you to even know what form you're supposed to fill in. Bro, yeah. I've never been so confused in my life. Eventually, like it got to a point where I really needed to sort them out and I just didn't because I couldn't even figure out the form to sign up as a freelancer. Yeah. And it was obviously it was like really irritating and frustrating. So I sort of like, I threw my hands up in the air like, ah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it got to like a year later and um, I realized, whoa, um, spoke to some friends again. And oh, this one friend helped me out with everything. She was like, okay, this is the form. This is what it's called. You need to find it and fill that one in. You don't need to fill in any other form. Mm. And then you wait for like a code. So, okay, great, great, great. Found it, filled it in as best I could. Ended up getting a code in the in the mail like a week later. And then I finally had an account on the government website and it was that easy. I just needed to fill out that form. The most frustrating part was figuring out which one I needed to fill in. Bro, this is the thing though. Why the fuck don't they teach this shit at school? Like, why the fuck do I need to know about PSHE when I could have been learning about what the fuck I have to do when I have to pay my taxes? I had no idea. (laughs) There are times, like even now, like sometimes I do something and like I feel like people look at me and they're like, imposter <laughs> yeah sus like, <laughs> are you even a functioning adult yeah that's to me that's been the most relatable thing from my whole adult life what feeling like a fake <laughs> yeah feeling like a fake feeling like everyone's putting on a show mm, because yeah. obviously when i see people i'm like oh wow they're really put together but then i talk to them and i talk to my friends everyone's in the same boat yeah 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 i guess it's yeah it kind of like overlaps with what we talked about in our first episode but it's really hard i think the whole adulting thing and i know it's it, it's 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 like a almost like a tv trope now to be like a disaster you know, <laughs> i mean the lead character is always a disaster and then their life is like seemingly put together by the end of the film or tv show or whatever <sighs> Yeah, it's not a trope. Where when am I gonna get the perfectly packaged ending? Like when is when am I gonna, gonna figure like, it out? Into my life and like figure my shit out. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> These are the things that plague me at night. Legit. These are my four AM thoughts. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, I I genuinely think at school we should have just learned this. I, I've and this isn't new. This isn't. We're not like you know spewing anything revolutionary. Here. Oh God, no. Like mortgages, like credit cards. Yeah. Oh like, my god, credit cards and mortgages would have been, I have. A lifeline, my guy. Yeah, a li- that's exactly it, a lifeline. And also, like, this, okay, this is probably a me problem. Registering to vote, I remember. Registering to vote, that's the tedious that's, bit. And also, it's like, okay, is it just me, or am I just really thick? 
I feel like they word their questions very confusingly. It's like, it's a lot of, I don't know, it like takes me a few times to read over it and like comprehend what okay. they're saying, what they're asking of me. Okay, I think this is a universal thing because, uh, so when you uh, ended up getting an offer for this new job mm. and you're super excited and obviously you need to do the whole new job process where they ask you questions and you need to, you know, to do with so you can get paid and, you know, whatnot. And the questions they ask are worded in a very specific way. So specific. It's the same thing. It legit, they, there's like one minuscule difference. And let me make this very clear. We are fluent in, in English. Yeah, I, I can. I am not illiterate. <laughs> we are very fluent, We're okay? Very fluent, barely. <laughs> no, we but are. But for some we reason, th- right, they make it intentionally difficult because if we found, like, find it difficult or somewhat irritating to work around, can you imagine how people whose first language isn't English? Why make it difficult? Why not just word it in a really simple way? Like, that's what I don't fucking understand. You literally have the choice. Right? I just, I just don't get it. It's annoying, but, you know, part of being an adult is questioning why are things the way they are, and then not being able to do anything about it. Yeah, part of them is like questioning whether you do or do not speak English. (laughs) Reading (laughs) forms and you're like, oh my god, have I forgotten how to read? (laughs) Like, legit. Alright, so we've been talking a lot about how difficult being an adult or coming... Le struggle. Le struggle. Basically talking about le struggle. (laughs) But my question to you is, when was the first time you felt like an adult? I okay. When I really felt like an adult, mm. really felt like one, was I remember the first time I got my first real job. It was an intern job, mm. but I bought all my cousins' presents with my own money. Oh, and I remember, and they still bring it up to this day, like. <laughs> And we went out for drinks because I was like, oh, it's my first job. And you were basically like celebrating. Yeah. And I like, I got the round because I was like, I want to buy drinks for you guys. And it's mm. just, yeah, it was like, that was... That's for, oh, that's actually really sweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't bought them a presents this year, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a one-time thing. It was just it was for one celebration. Time, one time. But yeah. What about you? Uh, uh, Yeah, my third year of uni. At that point, I'd been working in a restaurant, in a Thai restaurant, and it had been, what, three years since I'd been there. Loved working there. It was a small family-run business, so there was only like three of them. So obviously I'd been making money and I'd been working there over the summers. I had some money saved up and when I got into third year, I don't know what happened, but I was so put together, right? I used to go to the gym in the mornings before uni. Oh my god, I remember when you used to tell me this, I'm like, the fuck? Yeah, like I used to get up when it was dark Bruh. and I went with a friend and then we would go back home, because the, the gyms were really close to us, so then we'd go back home, shower, get ready for the day and then get on the bus mm. uh, to uni and we would be one of the first people there Yeah, because it's basically, it's first come, first serve. Oh, okay. I needed that software. I needed the software on those computers to be able to do the projects. Uh, So after going to the gym and then going to uni, I would then have my evening job. Mm. I have never felt that kind of productive. Yeah, yeah. Like everything. I don't know what it was, but in my last year, it really felt, yeah, it just felt like things fell into place and it was working out for me. And I really felt like I figured it out in my last year of uni. Yeah. I think it felt like I took a step back after I finished uni because I moved back home. Mm. And that's not to say, look, part of adulting... Is taking the L. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. You're going you're gonna to take some hits. Massive hits. Massive hits. Yeah. And, you know, it could be worse. Mm. Like, it can always be worse. But everything's relative to you. Do what you can. That's literally that's literally it. Do what you can. You're not a mind reader. You're not like a psychic. Yeah. And right now is not the best time to like measure your like success. Your success <laughs> or your productivity or oh, whatever the fuck. Yep, definitely. Like right now everyone's just been rammed up the ass. Like, yeah, collectively, yeah. Collectively just done. But you know what? Like I said, you gotta take the hit sometimes. <laughs> From the back. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, on that note, <laughs> with that lovely thought in your mind, <laughs> um, yeah, that was another episode of Really Bitch. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Hope I put a smile on your face. Yeah. Just have a good day, man. Just take care of yourself. Yeah, stay safe. Have fun. Yeah. Enjoy enjoy the time you got. Jesus. What? That, I thought that was being really nice. Oh, I thought you meant like, you know, because it won't last. <laughs> oh my Maybe God. Maybe just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to be supportive. Oh, shit. Well, on that note, again. Um... <laughs> Try your best and Try have fun best, with it. Man. Try your best. All right. Bye. Bye. Really? Bitch. 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 So, question to you, Wombat. To me. To you. To me. Okay, no, we're not going to do this. <laughs> you know, I met the Chuckle Brothers. What? Yeah, I met them. They they used to do gigs. There is like, used a picture to... of me. They're like my with... childhood. <laughs> yeah, with the Chuckle Brothers. I'm on a barrier. My tits are like spilling out of my top. <laughs> and I just look like I'm so happy to be there. <laughs> you know, it was great. I it mean, that's fun. their whole thing, isn't it? They're just happy guys. They're just the Chuckle Brothers. The ch- exactly, the Chuckle Brothers. Oh,